All right, folks, welcome back for another 6.5 Creedmoor video. It's been a little while since we've done a Creedmoor video. We built an AR-10, we've been shooting 308 in that guy so far, but we do have a 6.5 Creedmoor upper ready to go, ready to shoot. We were initially planning to hold off on a 6.5 Creedmoor upper, but Ballistic Advantage was nice enough to send us a barrel and we got a good deal on an upper set, so this guy's put together and ready to rock. However, I'm not quite ready to move over to that in 6.5 Creedmoor yet. We've still got a lot of unfinished business with our bolt action Thompson Center Compass. So today's video, we're just gonna shoot the Thompson Center Compass. The Creedmoor AR-10 videos are gonna start sooner rather than later. Like I said, the upper's ready to shoot. So it's coming, just not quite yet. And to be honest, we're already, you know, we got our hands full with 308 on that platform. So hopefully the more we learn in the 308 AR-10, we'll be able to bring that experience to 6.5 Creedmoor once we're ready to get started with it. All right, speaking of the unfinished business we've got with the Thompson Center Compass, one of them is the 142 two grain Sierra Match King. I was going back through the, our list of videos and stuff, trying to remember what bullets I'd tried and which ones we still needed to try. This is definitely at the top of the list of the bullets we haven't tried yet. So that's what today's video is gonna be all about. Now, the last two videos we have shot IMR 4451, and we're gonna shoot it again today. The previous bullets we've tried it with were the 140 grain Nosler RDF and the 140 grain Hornady hollow point bowtail. We got excellent accuracy. We got excellent standard deviation, and we're seeing pretty decent velocities out of this stuff as well. So I wanna use it here with the 142 grain Sierra Match King, and I wanna match it up against H40 350. Still got enough left for this video and this seems like a good time to try it out because I'm very interested to see how these two powders directly compare to one another. Hopefully you guys are have been able to find H4350 lately. There seems to be a huge batch that was released this year and I'm still seeing it sitting on the shelf at some places. So hopefully they've caught up and everybody's got their H4350 if they've been looking for it. But if you looked in the past and gave up, now's a good time to look again because it seems to be out there and available right now. So we're gonna to continue to use the same set of brass we've been using. This is Starline Small Primer Brass that has eight firings on it. It was annealed before the previous uh, firing. Mopar Madman over at the Bolt Action Reloading YouTube channel annealed these guys for us. They're still in really good shape. So that's what we're gonna to continue to use. You might already notice, I've already got these guys primed. They're sized, I made sure none of them were too long. I chamfered and deburred the uh, case mouth and we're ready for powder. So the load data is gonna be straight off of Sierra's sheet. They show an overall length of 2.810 inches. My notes on this bullet show that it hits the lands in my rifle at about 2.880 inches. So that's about 70 thousandths of jump. We'll just try that out here for the first video with this bullet. If we're not seeing the accuracy that we're hoping for, maybe we can stretch out this overall length and get it a little closer to the lands. I don't know. IMR 4451, our max charge is going to be 42.9. We're going straight off the Sierra data. Did I already say that? They show that max of 42.9. That's what we'll shoot. We'll shoot three tenths of a grain increments and that puts us starting at 41.7. Now, Hodgton does have low data for this bullet as well. They show a max charge of 41.4 grains. They shoot an overall length of 2.780 though. So that's 30,000 shorter overall length than we're shooting. And in the last two videos with this powder, we've been up to 42.5 grains with 140 grain bullets and didn't see any problems. So we'll keep our eye on it. I think 41.7 is low enough to where hopefully we won't be in trouble to start with. And then we'll just keep a good eye on the brass as we go along and see what it shows us. On the H4350 side of things, Sierra shows max charge of 41.9. That puts us starting at 40.7. Now the Hodgton max charge with this powder is, is, uh, is pretty close, it's 41.5. So Hodgton and Sierra agree a little bit closer with H4350. However, when we were shooting the 143 grain Hornady ELDX, we, we went all the way up to 43.4 grains. That's part of my frustration so far with H4350. The max charges in the manuals just don't really get you the velocity you're looking for, and it seems like a lot of people just end up exceeding max. I don't know, we're gonna stick with 41.9, like Sierra suggests, so we'll see how it goes. I'm interested to see how these guys compare in the velocity department. All right, is that it? I think that's pretty much it. I need to start weighing out powder. Did I show you guys my new uh, loading tray? A fine viewer sent this to me. Look at that guy. This is one of the Lyman aluminum loading trays and it is sweet. Very heavy, very substantial. I've used it a little bit in 308. 
and it's been nice. So thanks again for that. All right, I need to start weighing out powder. It's boring. You've seen me do it a whole bunch of times in this 6.5 Creedmoor series, so we'll skip it, and I'll see you guys at the bullet seating die. All right, so we've got a seating stem that fits this bullet pretty well. Down in there, nice, uh, yeah, doesn't feel too wobbly, so I expect we'll be okay. Shouldn't have any weird marks on our bullets. I guess I could have mentioned. We are using Hornady Custom Grade dies with the micro just micrometer adjustment on top so our target overall length is 2.810 back this guy up a good bit and see how these guys seat felt pretty good we should be very long oh no the batteries are dead in my calipers all right we'll just use these instead Okay, looks like I'm only 65 thousandths too long. All right, there's 60, so we'll seat a couple of them. All right, so I'm seeing a range, like right now, this one's 2.815 is the shortest, and the longest is 2.822. So we're still five to 10 thousandths long. Let's switch over to the Hornady Bullet Comparator. There it is, I'm gonna go ahead and zero it out. Turn the dial just a touch. Okay, let's see what the comparator number is 2.230 2.230 and 2.230 so let's go down five thousandths that'll make it 2.225 on the comparator nice round number that's easy to remember all right so now the normal overall length we've got most of them right around 2.810 which was our target but there are a couple that are stretching a little bit longer than that close enough now case capacity is good with both of these powders this one is a max charge of imr 4451 I expect there's still still a little bit of room in the case. Yep. And our max charge of H4350 also leaves a little bit of room in the case. So good. Our die is set. I just need to run through and seat them, and we'll be ready to hit the range. All right, folks, it's time to get this party started. The target is at 100 yards. The dots are one inch in diameter. This is our Thompson Center Compass. We're shooting with a Silencer Co. Omega Suppressor. Magneto speed chronograph, a 16 power vortex scope, front rest and rear bag, and that's about it. Now these rounds at 2.810 inches easily fit in the magazine, so that's how we're going to feed them. We're going to start with IMR 4451. The first charge is 41.7 grains. Let's see how it shoots. The gun's completely cold right now. I haven't shot any warm-up shots at all. So let's see how it does. All right, folks, I'll take that start. The group opened up there with those last couple shots, but maybe now that the gun's a little warmer, a little more settled in, this next group will be better. Starting off great with the velocity at 26.27, 7.0 feet per second standard deviation and an 18.0 feet per second extreme spread. That's pretty good. So we're moving on, 42.0 is next. All right, so our standard deviation more than doubled, the extreme spread more than doubled, but at least the brass still looks good. So we're moving on, 42.3. All right, so it is completely dead calm today, zero wind. So I'm getting a little bit of mirage off my suppressor a bit earlier than I expected or than I normally do. I've been shooting slow. You know, I, I take a minute or two between shots and time between groups and all that, but 
But regardless, I'm gonna take a little break here, maybe give it 15 minutes, hopefully calm down some of that mirage. All right, break time is over. The suppressor's cooled off. Next up is 42.6 grains. Yeah, without that first shot, that would have been a pretty good group. We'll blame that on the barrel cool down. All right, last up with IMR 4451 is 42.9 grains. All right, so that's a pretty good finish for IMR 4451. The standard deviations were just a touch higher than I would have liked to have seen, but otherwise, pretty good stuff. All right, moving on to H4350. The first load is 40.7 grains. So we had a nice standard deviation going there until the, la the very last shot. It took us from an extreme spread of five all the way up to 32. Okay, the brass looked fine. So next up is 41.0 grains. All right, so better standard deviation number, but the group kind of went a little bit crappy. But the thing is, suppressor mirage is starting to drive me crazy again. So it's time for another break. And if you're wondering why I don't have a suppressor cover, so I don't have to worry about this, well, it's kind of on purpose. Like it's a good way to make sure I keep the barrel cool, right? So time for a break. All right, so my eyes are rested and the suppressor is now cool. So these last three groups are going to be the best of the day. 41.3 is next. Yeah, so our standard deviation number kind of got screwed up by one shot. The first shot was 20 feet per second slower than the rest. So we'll blame that on the cooled down barrel as well. Maybe. Next up, 41.6. All right, last but not least, 41.9 grains. All right, folks, we got a couple good groups down there. And this cheap little gun just keeps on impressing. 
All right, let's get packed up, head back to the bench. All right, time for the traditional look at the brass. And I have absolutely nothing to show you here. These first five rows are the 4451. The last five are the H4350. No ejector marks or weird anything going on. Now with this gun, yeah, with this gun, it's normal for us to get a little bit of primer cratering. And I see that throughout. But it all just looks good. That's all there is to it. All right, folks, let's look at all of the groups at once. Makes for a messy picture here, but we've got group size at the top, velocity right below that, standard deviation. The last is extreme spread. So if we start at the top, IMR 4451, our best group with this powder was the highest charge, 42.9 grains. It hit 2,700 feet per second. That's, that's all good stuff right there. The worst group of this powder was the one right before it, the 0.974 inch group, where we kind of had that one flyer that screwed everything up. But overall, I'm very happy with this combo. The gun clearly seems to like this bullet, and it looks like IMR 40, uh, 4451 is getting the job done. Standard deviation's not quite as good as they have been in the last couple videos. We only had one single digit standard deviation, the first group with a 7.0, and the others were in the teens. And it's, you know, it's the same story down there with H4350. So it makes me wonder, even though we've only had one firing on this brass since it was annealed, we might need to do it again. So annealing after every firing might just be what it takes. I don't know. I'd be curious to hear from any of you guys out there who maybe you shoot H4350 and you've really got your uh, standard deviation numbers dialed in. I'm curious if you've tried IMR4451 and how they compared because this powder is just impressing me. Like I'm digging IMR4451. Having said that, down to our second row, you gotta say that H4350 shot a little bit better. The last three groups were really good. A .633, a .755, and then the final group, a .481. So our velocity was a little bit lower than it was with IMR4451, but not much, 40, 40 feet per second, 38 feet per second at the top end. It's not a ton. I'm not sure what happened with the first two the 0.916 inch group, and then the 1.018 inch group. This combo just didn't really seem to come alive for us until we got to that middle middle group. So, I mean, I think the conclusion coming out of this one is, I mean, we got similarly excellent performance out of both of our powders. Our gun really likes this bullet. It seems to shoot almost as well as the 140 grain Hornady Boktel hollow point, but that bullet has just been amazing in both my Creedmoor and my Grendel. Like that's a magic bullet. But these are pretty close. Like these are absolutely pretty close and a heck of a lot better ballistic coefficient. So this was a good little trip to the range. I'm glad, I'm glad we did a 6.5 Creedmoor video today. I, it was kind of a toss up of whether I was going to do a 308 video or a, or a 6.5 Creedmoor. It was good to get back to 6.5 Creedmoor just to shoot some good groups, just to build the confidence in myself. You know, we're having troubles over in 308 and sometimes it's nice to just reset, go to something you know is gonna be a good shooter and a good day on the range, and that's kind of what this was. Like it was a, like I feel, I feel refreshed. You know, life has been easy in 6.5 Creedmoor from the beginning, pretty much. Like this gun has just been so impressive, and I really hope our 6.5 Creedmoor upper is gonna be similarly forgiving. Like easy to reload for, easy to shoot good groups with. I just have the worst luck when it comes to 308, and it goes back to well before I ever started this YouTube channel. I've always had trouble with 308 in my Tika bolt action rifle, my Savage lever action, and now in the AR-10, it just seems to be a challenge. But there's been one common thing in that cartridge all the way back to the beginning, and that is the die set, the Redding die set that I've always used for 308. And the Hornady dies that we're using in this series have been so impressive that I just went ahead and picked up a set of 308 dies. So if you're following along in that series, that's uh, that's gonna be our next step. We'll just try some different dies. Like it can't hurt, it can't make things worse. We've already got the micro just seating stem from this series and yeah, I don't know, they're cheap. Like these die sets are cheap and they've been so good here in Creedmoor. Might as well try them in 308. I don't know how I got to talking about 308 dies, but I don't know. Well, back on to 6.5 Creedmoor. Today was so much fun. You'll probably see another one of these really soon. We've still got more bullets to test. Like uh, 
We could continue testing with the 142 grain Match King. You know, we've got a half a box left, but I might leave those for the AR-10. We've got plenty of other stuff that still needs tested. So, all right, folks, that's it for today. I will see you guys next time.